What's up guys, Car Passion Channel coming at you with some more Mega Squirt tuning tips and tricks. Everyone's like, wait a minute, you're wearing the same clothes as the last video. That's because it's the same day. Like I said, I wanna break these videos up into segments so I don't overload you guys, but you already know the drill, no need for a long intro. Let's just jump into it. In this video, I'm gonna cover a lot of the main tables and menus that we're gonna be working with as we tune the car. And I'm gonna start it off with the AFR target table. To get to your AFR target table, come up here to fuel settings and click on AFR table one. Now, this is kind of an interesting concept. The AFR target table is not how you tune the fueling of your car, if only it were that easy. This table is used by several features of Megasquirt, including EGO and VE Analyze, which I'll get into later. All you need to be concerned with right now is you're telling Megasquirt in perfect conditions, this is how I would like my car to run. This right here is a completely untouched AFR target table from the base map. And there's a couple things we have to do before we start driving. Number one is scaling the axis. The numbers here on the Y axis represent manifold pressure in KPA. Now in a naturally aspirated car, you'll never go above 100 KPA. That's why it's on top here, but we need to rescale this axis for boost. If you're not sure how to convert boost PSI into KPA, just hop on Google. It makes it real easy. I'm gonna set the top of my table to 180 KPA, which is about 12 PSI. I don't really plan on even running 10 PSI, but I want a little extra buffer zone up top. I'm gonna to set that to 180, and then I'm gonna scale these numbers appropriately all the way down. This is what I came up with. There's not really an exact science to it. I just kind of roughly did it by 20s. You wanna make sure you go from 30 or so up just above what boost you're gonna be running. On the X axis, you have RPM, and you're probably gonna have to rescale that as well. On mine, they only brought it up to 6,000 RPM, where my red line is 7,000. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 7,000, and then scale down appropriately. Again, there's not really an exact science to it. You just want your limits at either end to be within the engine's operating range, and for the intervals to be somewhat evenly spaced. Now that you've scaled your axis, you're going to have to make some adjustments to the map itself, specifically the area in boost, which is everything above 100 kPa. I'm just going to go ahead and lower this down so I'm running mid to high 11s target in boost and around 12 and a half at wide open throttle, which is this area right here. And then down in the cruising cells, it can run much leaner because the engine is under a lower load. Don't forget, anytime you make adjustments, you want to click burn so you send the information to the ECU. The next thing I wanna talk about is the VE table. So come up here to fuel settings and click on fuel VE table one. VE stands for volumetric efficiency. Now on my base map, these axes are already scaled, so I don't have to worry about that. As far as all these numbers, I'm not gonna change any of these up front either. Changing these numbers directly affects how much fuel is provided to the engine at any given time. Tuner Studio and Megalog Viewer have some really good tools for helping you make adjustments to this table, and I'll get into that in a later video. Next, let's take a look at the ignition map. You're gonna click on ignition settings and come down to ignition table one. Again, this is a completely untouched base ignition map. The axes are already scaled as well, and the ignition timing is actually pretty good. It's actually really safe for a boosted car. You can see up into boost, it goes all the way down to 10 and nine degrees, depending on how much boost you're running. I pretty much do not touch this unless I'm on a dyno with one exception, and that is right about here. In this area, sometimes on the base map, I'll hear some detonation, and it kind of sounds like pebbles being dropped into a coffee can. If you can hear that, you just basically want to take this area right here and take out one degree at a time until that sound goes away. You may not experience that in your car. I just wanted to throw it out there that that's the only issue I've ever really found with the base ignition map. Another feature that's really common to make adjustments to is acceleration enrichment. So you're going to click on the Excel Enrich button and come down here to time-based Excel Enrichment. Since the 1.6 does not have a variable TPS, Megasquirt does not use the stock TPS at all unless you've converted it to a variable TPS. This is map-based acceleration enrichment. So if I start the engine up, you'll see when I blip the throttle, 
how that green dot jumps to a certain place in the curve. Basically, acceleration enrichment is a feature that adds fuel when you snap the throttle open very quickly to compensate for the rush of air that comes into the engine. The steeper you make this curve, the more fuel you'll add. It's something that can take a lot of time to get really good, but you pretty much just need to mess with it at first if you're noticing hesitation when you first crack the throttle open. This is, you guessed it, another one of those trial and error things. You just have to play with different settings until you find a happy medium and the car's running smooth. Another thing you wanna check before you drive the car is where your rev limiter is set. So you're gonna to come to basic load settings, click on rev limiter. Guys, I know it's tempting to set this to 10,000, but you can do serious, serious damage to your engine. The safe limit for most Miata engines is around 7,400, but to be extra safe, I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine at 7,000. I'm also gonna turn on spark and fuel cut. And the last menu I wanna cover in this video is under Boost Advanced, Boost Control Settings. You wanna set up your overboost protection for the setup that you're running. Now in this car, I'm running about four pounds of boost. I plan on turning it up to maybe six or seven, but I'm gonna set my overboost protection to approximately 10 PSI, which is 170 kPa. And the reason for this is there might be a certain situation where the car will go maybe one PSI over what I want it to run at, but if there's a major problem, like the wastegate signal line breaking, it might try to go to 20 PSI, and I definitely want some sort of safety to kick in before then. So I'm gonna set this to 170, leave this on fuel cut, and click burn. I usually set my overboost protection two to three PSI above my actual target. Okay, are you guys completely bored out of your mind yet? If you're not, why don't you drop a like on this video, let me know you're enjoying the series so far. In the next video, I'm gonna be driving the car. I'm gonna show you how to do data logs, we're gonna start making some adjustments to the fuel table, and just other general fun things. I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Peace out, guys.